Welcome to Comic Movie 10, where you get insight into everything comic book movies and television related in 10 minutes or less. I'm Joe Kane. And I'm Dan Kane. No, no relation. relation. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and share and keep up with us at hecklacane.com. On today's episode, we're going to talk about why the Justice League bombed at the box office. Yeah, there are a multitude of reasons, and uh, we think we kind of have a handle on it. So um, let's start out with saying, giving the actual numbers. Okay. Um, so 228 million domestic. Right. 556 worldwide. Now, now the box office just recently closed. It's been, it was almost a three month run of this right. uh, movie worldwide. So, you know, the numbers still came in, and uh, you said it before we came on air. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> what kind of world we're in that set almost $700 million is considered a bomb? Yeah. But it, it's just the 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 all the movies that are flooding in, the comic book movies, the n tremendous numbers that they're doing where $700 million is considered a bomb because all these other movies are... <sighs> Yeah. Doing what they're doing. Well, here's the thing. You, you can judge it by the um, success of the other films, okay? Right. Man of Steel only came in um, somewhere in the, for the worldwide, somewhere in the 660 range, 668, I believe. Right. Um, worldwide. So, you know, how do, they're judging it by Man of Steel and saying, this bombed. Right. Okay? By standards, by, you know, local filmmakers and, and people like this, bombing at 228 million domestic is mind blowing. Yeah. But comparatively to the other superhero films that are out there. Right. That's that's the level that we need to um set, the bar that we need to set. Right. All right. So uh what are some of the what's some of the reasoning behind it? Um I, I mean I feel like Marvel has uh set a bar I, talking about this. That's what it is. That I, I think that people are getting the idea that they're going to the movies. They see the films that are being put out right now by DC, mm -hmm. starting with Man of Steel all sure. the way up through. Um, and it's not to the quality of what Marvel's putting out time and time and again. And you're talking about almost 20 Marvel films mm -hmm. to... Well, Tim Burton's 1998 Batman came out, and that was a DC blockbuster that right. just blew everyone 89. away. 1989. What did I say? 99? Nin I think you... Whatever it is. Yeah. 89. Uh, Tim Burton's Batman came right. out, and it was it was so absolutely, unbelievably untouchable by any other superhero film. Right. And Marvel has kind of retooled themselves and gone, okay, well, this is how we do it, and set a standard. Right. And at this point, DC is playing catch-up. They're playing catch-up. I mean, this is excluding the Dark Knight trilogy. Sure. Because this was kind of before, you know, this set of films has kicked off and started in this direction. Well, um, we're, we're talking specifically about the uh, DC universe, the DC, I suppose. Yeah, I I guess so. But, you know, Marvel, on top of the fact that they've tied everything in together, mm -hmm. everything. everything, I mean, from the movies to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to the mention of the Avengers in Jessica Jones on Netflix, the yeah. whole Marvel universe is connected. Yeah, DC still does say, stay disjunct. The stuff on TV is on TV. Hell, we have two flashes that are running around. Uh, yeah. Nothing right. is, you know. Right. Uh, maybe that's part of it is that they haven't tied everything in together. They, how many people were saying, you know, just bringing up Flash, how many people wanted to see Grant Austin as the Flash in the movie? And then they cast um, uh, Ezra. Um, help me out. Oh, I'm, I'm having a, <laughs> a brain fart. Senior uh, moment on both of our parts. Um um, but they cast someone else besides right. Grant Austin. So, um, you know, looking at this and going, okay, well, they have two disjunct universes going on while Marvel has combined everything. Right. They've made it one. Uh, and again, the level of films that I, th I think about Avengers, the first Avengers, mm -hmm. comparatively to this movie. Okay. Well, that's th I think that's where it's supposed to be. But the 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 formula that Marvel used was... You know, set them up here, set them up here, set them up here in separate movies, and then put them together. DC is going at it from the opposite point of view. And now, don't get me wrong, I'm a huge DC fan. Right. DC went, here's everybody, and then we'll give them their independent movies. Right. So, uh, you know, is it is it a frame of mind of how they're uh, presenting it? 
that is the problem or is it how they are um, delivering it? Now, there are some story issues here that we looked at and we said, you know, there there was a lack of story looking at uh, going back to Superman and Batman. OK, right. uh, Superman versus Batman, the you know, the whole clincher of that whole serial, that whole movie was the that both of their mothers were named Martha. Yes. <laughs> I mean, why are you saying why that? are you saying that? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, can't, I can't. It also uh, caught me funny that, you know, the Metropolis and Gotham looked like they were as close as uh Manhattan and Jersey, but yeah. meanwhile they've never run into each other before. But you can see the yeah. bat signal from Metropolis. Yeah, sure. Uh, that the whole thing kind of threw me off a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> you know what? There's a certain set of um, expectations when going into the comics, and and Zack Snyder kind of created this and spearheaded this that they were literally across the bay from each other. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know. Maybe that turned off some fans. Maybe. Uh, maybe I think I, I just I keep going back to just you know you put a series of movies out you're getting the idea as they each come out that they're, they're not living up to what Marvel's put out from Iron Man in 2008 all the way up to the movies that are about to come out like Infinity War sure I mean we see the trailers and we get more excited over the Marvel trailer than we do over the some of the DC, DC movies, movies. <laughs> um, uh, well let me ask you something I'm going to pose this question to you uh, Zack Snyder came, came in and directed the first half mm -hmm. of uh, this Justice League movie he left and Joss Whedon took over and directed the second half of the movie uh, that's problematic uh, yeah. regardless of who the two people are you know Zack Snyder cited uh, personal things that he had in his life that he had to step down, and right. I can appreciate that. It, uh, it happens. Absolutely. Um, so no no ill will towards Zack Snyder, but did he leave an unfinished thing? That Zack Snyder, that is Joss Whedon now trying to piece things together that didn't exist, or did did he did Joss Whedon come in and say I need to put my mark on this? That's, I don't. Yeah, that's the question. Because yeah. they went into endless reshoots. They right. started reshooting and going, okay, well, Joss Whedon had to shoot this and this and this and this and this, and which gets into the the whole right. uh, mustache catastrophe, <laughs> must mustastrophe. <laughs> Can I coin that word, mustastrophe? We'll try. <laughs> mustastrophe. Yeah. Um, um, we couldn't have Superman with a mustache. No, 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 no. It wouldn't have. It, it, it really wouldn't have had the same effect. No, not at all. Um, I, I, You know, it's also a big thing for me is the choice of justice leaguers right okay. i think that the, a lot of that has to do with something that uh, maybe i'm too much of a traditionalist and, okay. I, and i need to just get over it but where's green lantern except for this flashback to a thousand years ago where one of the green lanterns was floating through the battle scene um another thing is i i think i was looking for martian manhunter maybe instead of cyborg yeah. in this film because it just seemed more. Well, Cyborg wasn't one of the original uh, Justice Leagues uh, leaguers. Leaguers, right? Um, he was he was uh, a new addition, kind of in the the New Fifty Two era when the comic books came out, as he became a permanent member of the team. So you know, it's it, I, you can see where someone who's new will not get the same reception from guys who are older right. right who now are looking at this and going well ah oh, but what about the original guys i know about the about the original guys but it's something that you know that i can deal with if the story is built up the right way like you look at again you look at avengers it's this problem this problem to this problem it's it's unfolded right yeah as opposed to seeming like one big build up to one final controversy that gets taken care so, of so so if if i may sum this up the big problem why justice league bombed at the box office is because marvel is doing it right maybe because if there was if they didn't have that to compare it to it might be i mean again these films are not even what the dark knight trilogy was no it, it's it's just what people are looking for it could have something to do with what marvel is doing right now because yeah. that's the biggest thing out there well, let us know in the comments below uh, what you think the reason is why this <laughs> amazing flop of a movie <laughs> at 20, 228 million domestic. Yeah. Um, and what you think your reason, what you think the reason is why it bombed at the box office.
We love bringing you these episodes, and we need your help to keep them coming. Please don't forget to share and subscribe, and keep up with us at HeckLocane.com.